Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. We're gonna to make a short video here of just, uh, we processing some venison. We got about, actually we got 30 pounds, not about 30 pounds, but 30 pounds. And uh, people like different amounts of beef fat in this. Some people don't like any beef fat in it. That's, you know, that's understandable. But for the ones who are watching this and want to know how uh, to add your beef fat, percentage that you need, things of that nature, we're just gonna do a short video concerning that. And at this point, uh, we have the deer meat done uh, ground up and aged. It's ready to mix. Uh, I've got some of the beef fat already in here, but I just wanted to start at one point and show you kind of how I do it. Uh, it's important to have some kind of a scale where we can uh, weigh uh, your deer meat properly and your fat meat before you ever put this in here. I mean, instead of trying to guess at it, uh, it, it's a lot easier to just weigh it out. So, so right now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this pack of fat meat. And this is uh, beef tallow. I'm gonna put it on top of top of what we have here. And I've already mixed some. And we got 28% um, beef fat going into this particular batch of venison. This stuff's still about frozen. Really, that's what you want. And it's very easy to uh, mix this particular fat into the venison because it's already been ground, and right, right there's a, a pellet, a small pellet. That's normally what it looks like when, when I buy it. It's just little pellets like that. And I take it and I freeze it. And then uh, when I get ready to mix it up, I just take it apart like this and spread it across the top and mix it all in with my hands. And then uh, we're gonna obviously run it back through the grinder through the second plate. And uh, it really mixes it good. And I just got some wonderful, uh, deer venison to eat and uh, it tastes like it tastes like pure beef or better uh, to us. And of course if you don't want to do your venison like that that's you know that's perfectly fine. Some like, some people don't like doing this. You know, they just like the taste of the of the venison and that's that's a personal preference. But uh, we like it we like it done like this and our customers do do also. I've got thirty pounds of uh, venison here, just the red stuff in, into this particular pack back, and I'm putting 28% uh, beef fat here, so you need to weigh out uh, that percentage before you mix it in there on the scale. So I have 10 more pounds of venison right here. I'm gonna dump it on top of here, and I'm gonna spread it out. You need to get you a tub of some kind to mix this stuff in, a big knife, we got a nice area to work. Do it like this and do it at layers. Put a layer of venison, a layer of fat, layer of venison, and it just makes it a little bit easier when you actually go to mix all this stuff. Go ahead and get my last batch of fat into it. Normally when you first buy this, it's beef tallow, uh, kidney suet, I believe they call it, where, wherever I get it at the company at, they call it different things. And uh, but it has a really good, good, good flavor to it. We've been using this uh, beef tallow for years. I'm putting it in uh, the venison. So it's really good. Makes a good hamburger steak. Makes a good hamburger. Anything you want to do with uh, beef uh, hamburgers you'd normally buy at the store, you can do with this. And also, let me let me just say this. Uh, this venison that's in this bag, this is not, this is not a deer that, that, that's come in, I took it, skinned it out, and, and you know, cut it up, throw it through here. It, it, it's done been through a long process before it got into this tub. Uh, I've had it in the walk-in cooler, and I aged it, and I got all the game flavor out of it, and, uh, the way I do that, I leave them in there until they don't have any smell on them anymore. I cut down into the deep part of the back quarter when I get ready to process it. And uh, I get in there and smell of it. And if it's, you know, if it's just a pleasant smell, don't have any odor to it at all, based nothing I can smell, I know it's ready to process at that time. So that's what I, that's what I go by. And I'll leave it in there until then. And then I'll take it out, trim it all up, get all the silver skin off of it that I can, run it through the grinder, and then it goes into the point to where we're at right now, which is which is mixing the beef fat into it. So right now I've got it, I've got it pretty much all in here. So what's gonna have to happen right now is 
I'm fixing to take my hands down in here, I got gloves on, and I'm gonna hand mix this fat and this venison like this as much as I can, get it kind of um, stabilized, you know, and, and all the same. And when I get to that point, then we're gonna go back through the grinder with it again. Let me move the scale out of the way. And get this right here out of here. All right, just go in here with your hands at this point and start just turning it over. And, and, and some people have mixers to do this with and they work really nice. If you can afford them and got them, hey, they the way to go. But if you don't have a, a nice mixer, uh, you have to use what God gave you. <laughs> These two hands. <laughs> so let's just get this stuff mixed up pretty good. And then we're gonna go back through the grinder with it. And when we come out of there, we're gonna have some awesome uh, venison meat burgers. Whatever you wanna do with it. And by the way, let me say one other thing about this meat. Most of the time, people are not uh, acquainted, let me say it that way, with venison that tastes as good as this venison is. And it's not saying this boasting or bragging about or anything like that. This is just something I've learned through the years and uh, to get the game flavor out of it. And it's just, it's just some awesome meat, man. It's just, this is not some meat that you gotta go somewhere and put a bunch of chili flavor on it and seasonings and all that kind of stuff to kill a guy. You ain't got this, this is a whole different another world. You can take this once I get it mixed, put it into a cast iron skillet and fry it, and you're gonna have one of the best deer venison burgers you ever have put in your mouth. A hamburger steak, grill it, whatever. And all you gotta do is put you some salt and pepper on it. And that's it, brother. I mean, it's good, good stuff. Let me get this grinder loaded back up, and we're gonna start getting grinding with the second grind. Now, this is the second grind uh, for the venison. Now, the fat meat uh, wasn't right. Well, I'll show you right quick. That's the first plate that it went through that was on here before I swapped it out. So now then we're gonna go to the smaller plate and that does a good job mixing the fat with the meat. And it also turns it into, you'll see it in just a moment. It'll, it'll be the quality of meat that comes right out of your uh, grocery store, Kroger or Walmart, wherever you shop at. And it'll look just like it. And probably taste better to be honest with you. Not knocking that meat or anything, it's pretty good. But it ain't to us, it ain't good as this meat is. <laughs> To me, this, this meat right here is way better than any uh, yeah, of that type. So, let me scoot this out. We're going to get another container. If I can find one. Let's see uh, what I've got to do. This whole thing. All right. Let me get another container. We're going to turn the grinder on. Back started grinding. Give this close shot of this right here, baby. Look how, look how, uh, now I will literally, once this right here gets all mixed and everything, I'm gonna go back to my hands again and I'll kind of mix it up. I'll just show you right quick. Without it going back through the grinder again. Let me just, I'm gonna cut the grinder off here and just so. All right, when you get to this point, I'll take my hands like this and kind of sift it up again. And this kind of just uh, gets it all mixed evenly the way you want it. And uh, you can see what it looks like. And this stuff will pack. I mean, you ain't got to worry about putting nothing in it and all that kind of stuff make it pack. It makes an awesome hamburger. It don't hurt to run this through here three times if you want to go through the trouble to do it. But this right here will do the trick. Come back up. <laughs> Again, I've got um, I've got a little bit more beef fat in this than most people probably use. A lot of people use anywhere from 10% to 20. Uh, I prefer 28%. I mean, I, it's, you know, and you can use whatever amount you want to use. That's your business and whatever you like. I absolutely and all that kind of stuff. And they are, let me show you this too. Um, matter of fact, I've got some sitting right over here. I have, 
I have some other kind of fat, but this is 50-50 beef and fat that I use sometimes. It's more expensive to use it, and, uh, but it has, it actually has a better flavor and taste than this fat does. And you really don't have to use as much of that particular fat. I don't know the taste, I don't know what it is, but, uh, but however, let me say this, I still use 28% no matter what. I'm just 28 percent type man with this stuff. But that other fat has a better actual flavor than this right here does. And it's a way more expensive to buy too. Alright. If you've got a grinder at home, in some kind of way. We're going to do another video on aging this deer meat one of these days. And I'm talking about um, a good long video to show you guys what to do if you don't have a walk-in coater to age it in and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we know how to do it two more ways that you can do it in a refrigerator and also in just an ice cooler. In other words, to get your meat into this situation right here where it's all the game flavor is gone out of it. And I mean, you can eat this right now and I mean, it's perfect. It don't have no smell to it whatsoever. No blood all over it, no nothing. So with the cooler or the refrigerator, or if you have a walk-in cooler, you probably already know about this, but most people don't. And so we're gonna try to teach you guys a way to get you venison aged up where you can do this right here at home if you want to your own self without having to take a processor and uh if you don't want to uh do it at home we'd be glad to take care of it for you if you want to bring it to where we're at but the main reason we're doing this video is to show you guys how to do it if you want to give it a shot at home on your own so once i get through with this and get out, get this whole pail mixed up. What we're gonna do at that time, we're gonna take it and we're gonna measure it. I got a little bowl I put it in. It's about a, a pound, it'll hold about a pound of meat. And so we'll take and mix up every how many bowls it takes of this and we dump it out and we vacuum seal it. And then at that time, it, it'll keep for a long, long time. It's ready for the plant to come and pick it up. And that's pretty much all of this to that. So instead of me sitting here boring you with a big, long video, we pretty much are at the point to where you can see what's going on, what we have done, and what the result is uh, from, from what we have done. So I just wanted to make a little short video with that, just to show you guys, you know, and talk to you just a minute about aging or uh, venison, because there's so many people out there that, that they get a deer and, and they don't know what to do with it. And even a lot of times, uh, sad to say, around our area anyway, um, you'll take it to a processor somewhere and they take in lots of deer and they, they take them through fast and don't uh, take their time with them and they don't get your meat like it needs to be done it because of the fact they're having to process so many and so fast. So you have to watch that kind of thing and uh, try to take it to somewhere to where people will personalize your venison uh, the same way they do their own at home. And it's just as simple as that. And that's what this is about. And uh, maybe you picked up a few tips uh, concerning processing your venison at this time and how much beef fat to put in it and things of that nature. Uh, I really don't have anything else to add at this point that I can think of other than, you know, I don't have my little bow with me, but I would show them, you know, how to put it in. I just shot a vacuum seater stuff right there. We're gonna get it, we're fixing to take just a, a small little bow we have and uh, vacuum seal it up. I don't even know what I'm doing with that little bit sitting here somewhere. But anyway, up until that point, we'll, we'll take it and weigh it one pound first and then put it into the vacuum cleaner, back up the label it, and put it into the freezer and and, uh, and freeze it. So we hope that uh, you picked up a few things 
uh, concerning uh, mixing up your deer meat for hamburger meat, hamburger steak, whatever in the world you want to use it for, it ain't going to matter. And uh, God bless, take care, and we're going to be out of here for today.